Dear friends, welcome back to the lecture series in the steam nozzle. This is lecture number three in the steam nozzle. The topic for this lecture is mass of the steam discharge and the critical pressure ratio. The learning outcome to this lecture. At the end of the lecture, the student will be able to derive the mass mass of the steam discharge through the nozzle and discuss the critical pressure ratio in a di convergent divergent nozzle. The steady flow energy equation for one dimensional flow. So, first we derive the mass of the steam discharge. So, for starting from the one dimensional steady flow energy equation for a horizontal nozzle. So, G z 1 plus V 1 square by 2 plus H 1 plus Q equal to G z 2 plus V 2 square by 2 plus H 2 plus W. That is the general form of the uh, steady flow energy equation for horizontal nozzle z1 equal to z2. So, dropping the term z1 z2 and rearranging q equal to v2 square by 2 minus v1 square by 2 plus h2 minus h1 plus w. So, v2 v1 they are the velocity of the steam at the exit and the inlet section, h2 is the enthalpy at the exit section, h1 is the enthalpy at the inlet section and w is the work done as the steam flows through the steam nozzle. So, we write the equation in differential form del q equal to d h plus differentiation of v 2 square by 2 plus del w. So, this is the equation again steady flow energy equation differential form. Now, from thermodynamics we know h equal to u plus p v. Now, you substitute in the right hand side. So, for the h value now the equation becomes uh, del q equal to differentiation of u plus p v plus differentiation of v square by 2 plus del w. So, performing the differentiation on the right hand side. So, we will get del q equal to d u plus p d v plus v d p plus d differentiation of v square by 2 plus del w. We know from the first law of thermodynamics del q equal to d u plus p, w, p, w, p d v and del w equal to 0 for a nozzle. Uh, there is no work done as the steam flows through the nozzle. So, what is the remaining term? So, d del q equal to d u plus p d v. So, these two are getting cancelled and del w equal to 0. So, what is remaining is v d p plus differentiation of v square by 2 equal to 0. So, that is uh, that is available. So, rearranging differentiation of v square by 2 equal to minus of v into d p specific volume into change in the pressure. The expansion in the nozzle follows the polytropic law. So, earlier in the earlier lecture we assumed isentropic flow. Now, we take the polytropic flow, polytropic law p v to the power n equal to constant then substituting for p v to the power n equal to constant in this equation and integrating. So, sub integrating from the inlet and the exit integrate 1 to 2 differentiation of d of v square by 2 equal to minus integral v d p. Now, you substitute from the p v to the power n equal to constant small v specific column equal to c into pressure to the power minus 1 by n. Substituting here left hand side integrating v 2 square v 2 square minus v 1 square divided by 2 equal to minus of integral 1 to 2 c constant c into pressure to the power minus 1 by n into d p. So, performing the integration right hand side. So, v 2 square by v 2 square minus v 1 square by 2 equal to c is a constant minus of c integrating p to the power minus n minus 1 by n plus 1 divided by minus 1 by n plus 1 from the limit 1 to 2. Left hand side as it is right hand side c is a constant minus c is a constant and the denominator will become now uh, minus n minus 1 my, uh, minus 1 plus n divided by n and rearranging this will become n by n minus 1 multiplied by p 2 to the power 1 minus 1 by n minus p 1 to the power 1 minus 1 by n and this we can write. So, this is a common term minus n by n minus 1 we take c into this bracket c constant c into p 2 p 2 to the power 1 by 1 by uh, 1 minus 1 by n minus c into p 1 to the power 1 minus 1 by n. Now, we have this equation v equal to c to the power c p to the power minus 1 by n or c equal to p to the power 1 by n into v and substituting the c in this equation. So, left hand side as it is right hand side minus n by n minus 1 replacing c by this term. So, for the first p 2 I write p 2 to the power 1 by n into v 2 
into P2 to the power 1 minus 1 by n minus P1 to the power 1 by n into V1 into P1 to the power 1 minus 1 by n. So, looking at this equation, this term P2 to the power 1 minus 1 by n, there are two terms P2 to the power 1 and P2 to the power minus 1 by n. So, P2 to the power minus 1 by n, P2 to the power 1 by n, they are getting cancelled. Similarly, here P1 to the power 1 by n, P1 to the power minus 1 by n getting cancelled. So, finally, V2 square minus V1 square by 2 equal to n by n minus 1. So, this is P2, V2 minus P1, V1. So, dropping the negative sign, this equation becomes P1, V1 minus P2, V2. So, velocity on the left hand side, the change in the pressure volume on the right hand side. So, this is the one equation. So, we continue the derivation. For negligible initial velocity V1 equal to 0, the velocity V2 from the previous equation rearranging square root of 2 n by n minus 1 P1 V1 minus P2 V2. Further, 2 n by n minus 1 P1 V1, we take P1 V1 as a common parameter, P1 V1 multiplied by 1 minus P2 V2 divided by P1 V1. Now, we know V2 by V1 equal to P2 by P1 to the power minus 1 by n. So, from the P V to the power n equal to constant. So, rearrange uh, for calculating V2 by V1 equal to P2 by P1 to the power minus 1 by n, substituting in this equation, velocity V2 equal to 2 n by n minus 1 P1 V1 multiplied by 1 minus P2 by P1 to the power n minus 1 by n. So, this is the exit velocity of the steam in terms of the pressure ratio P2 by P1. Then from the continuity equation, the mass of the steam discharged per unit area. So, m by a. So, m by a equal to V2 by V1. V2 by capital V2 divided by small V2. Capital V2 is the velocity, small V2 is the specific volume. Velocity we have calculated here in the earlier equation and specific volume we calculate from the perfect gas equation. So, specific volume V2 equal to V1 into P1 by P2 to the power 1 by n. So, from the polytropic equation, now you substitute capital V2 and small v2 in the mass flow rate equation m by a equal to 1 by V1 P2 by P1 to the power 1 by n into square root of 2 n by n minus 1 P1 V1 into 1 minus P2 by P1 to the power n minus 1 by n. Now, the value outside the square root, it is taken inside. Now, when you take 1 by V1 to the inside the bracket, inside the square root, this will become 1 by V1 square. 1 by V1 square, V1 square is in the denominator. So, in the numerator, we have 1 V1. So, that is getting cancelled. So, we will get 1 by V1 in the denominator. So, n is the same. n by 2 n by n minus 1 is the same. P1. Now, when you take V1 square inside, denominator, I will get V1. P2 by P1 to the power 1 by n is taken within this bracket. So, this becomes P2 by P1 to the power 2 by n minus P2 by P1 to the power n plus 1 by n. Now, this is the mass flow rate per unit area. So, here P1 is the inlet pressure, V1 is inlet specific volume, n is a polytropic index. The deciding parameter is P2 by P1. So, deciding parameter for the uh, mass flow rate is P2 by P1. So, the mass flow rate will be maximum if P2 by P1 to the power 2 by n minus P2 by P1 to the power n plus 1 by n is maximum. To get the maximum of this value, we have to differentiate this equation with respect to P2 by P1. So, we will do the differentiation. I take x equal to P2 by P1. The ratio is x and y, the equation y is x to, x to the power 2 by n minus x to the power n plus 1 by n. Now, you find differentiate dy by dx equal to 2 by n x to the power 2 by n minus 1 minus n plus 1 by n x to the power n plus 1 by n minus 1 equal to 0 and uh, 2 by n x to the power 2 by n minus 2 by n minus 1 equal to n plus 1 by n x to the power n plus 1 n plus 1 by n, n plus 1 by n minus 1. Now, this n is cancelled and uh, rearranging I will get x to the power n minus 1 by n equal to 2 by n plus 1 which is x equal to p2 by p1. So, p2 by p1 equal to p2 by p1 to the power n minus 1 by n equal to 2 by n plus 1. So, finally, p2 by p1 equal to 2 by n plus 1 to the power n by n minus 1 and this is called as critical pressure ratio. So, which is important uh, for the critical pressure ratio, it is only, what is, it, what is on the right hand side, it is only the polytropic index. p2 by p1 value, the optimum value is 2 by n plus 1 to the power n by n minus 1. 
Now substituting in this equation, mass flow rate, m by a maximum equal to 2 by 2 n by n minus 1, p1 v1, p2 by p1 to the power 2 by n minus p2 by p1 to the power n plus 1 by n and substituting for p2 by p1, this will be 2 n by n minus 1, p1 v1, 2 by n plus 1 to the power n by n minus 1 into 2 by n minus 2 by n plus 1 to the power n minus n by n by n minus 1 into n plus 1 by n. So simplifying the power 2 n by n minus 1, p1 v1, 2 by n plus 1, 2 by n minus 1, minus 2 by n plus 1 to the power n plus 1 by n minus 1. So, taking the first term outside, 2 n by n minus 1, p1 v1, 2 by n plus 1 to the power 2 by n minus 1 and the within the bracket, you will get min 1 minus 2 by n plus 1, n plus 1 by n minus 1 divided by 2 by n plus 1, 2 by uh, to the power 2 by n minus 1. So, simplifying, further mathematically working, 2n by n minus 1 p1 v1 2 by n plus 1 to the power 2 by n minus 1 simplifying the value within the bracket it will be n minus 1 by n plus 1. So, this n minus 1 this n minus 1 is getting cancelled. So, finally, the maximum mass flow rate equal to 2n by n plus 1 p1 v1 into 2 by n plus 1 to the power 2 by n minus 1 this is the maximum mass flow rate. So, from the equation, it is evident that the discharge through the nozzle depends on the throat area and the initial condition of the steam, not the other parameter. So, the initial condition and the throat area. So, when the, so the maximum mass flow rate will occur only in the throat area. And when the steam is superheated, n equal to 1.3, then P2 by P1 equal to 0 0.5457, V2 max equal to 1.063 to the power P, to the power square root of P1 B1 and the m maximum equal to 0 0.668 a2 into square root of p1 by v1. And when the steam is dry saturated steam, n equal to 1.135, then p2 by p1 equal to 0 0.5774, v2 maximum equal to 1.03 square root of p1 v1, and the maximum mass flow rate equal to 0 0.636 a2 into square root of p1 by v1. So, these are all the uh, parameter numerical value by substituting n equal to 1.3 and n equal to 1.135 in the previous equations. Now, we take a quiz question. First question, the critical pressure ratio of the steam is defined as. Now, you take a few seconds and read the four statement and if you are able to identify the correct answer, the correct answer is the critical pressure ratio is defined as the ratio of outlet pressure to the inlet pressure only when the mass flow rate per unit area is maximum. And the critical pressure ratio, the equations are given. You have to identify the correct equation among the four equations. So, if you identify B is the correct answer, then you are correct. And the critical pressure ratio of nozzle when the steam, steam is initially superheated, n equal to 1.3, and already I have shown the value in the uh, slide. So, if your grasping is good, you can identify the correct answer for the critical pressure ratio for the superheated steam and the correct answer. Otherwise, you have to substitute and calculate. The correct answer is 0 0.5457. I have another quiz question. The critical pressure ratio of nozzle when the steam is initially dry and saturated were n equal to 1.135. And again, this value also I displayed in the previous slides. So, if your grasping is correct, you can identify the correct answer. So, the correct answer is 0 0.5774. And uh, at the entry of the convergent divergent nozzle, the steam is at 22 bar and super, uh, with the superheated condition leaves at 4 bar. The pressure at the throat section is you have to calculate the answer is 12 bar. So, I stop here. Thank you for watching. Please post your comments on the comments box. If you have any queries, you can contact me through my mail ID or WhatsApp number. So, we will meet again with another video lecture in the stream nozzle. Until then, bye.